Bilal Street snaps its two-week gaming streak to, re to record uh, its biggest fall in two months. On the Editor's Roundtable, we discuss the FI positioning and the index movement. We decode whether the FIs have missed the Make in India bus. We'll also bring you the big EPS upgrades and downgrades. And we'll put the spotlight on the FMCG stocks. I'm Rajesh Susan. with me, it's a complete boys club today. Prashant, Anuj, as well as Nimesh. Welcome, gentlemen, and uh, we have got Raul Arora as well to uh, join in. So, all boys uh, club today. How are you feeling? Well, uh, it's good. Friday. <laughs> it's a Friday, right? <laughs> I just, but as you said, uh, all boys club. Uh, of course, we're missing Sonia, but uh, I think uh, it's okay. I think uh, Rahul is here, <laughs> Nigel is here, so I think we'll make up for the. D the difficult to make up for Sonia, question, but right? we'll have a question. Drink the beer no, but uh, the market this week was quite tough actually, you know, and uh, this was one of those weeks where uh, you were craving for Friday. Uh, you know, it's almost like, you know, when will Friday come and when will the markets close? Uh, and uh, very, very tough week actually, Nigel, frankly, for the market. Indeed, the yeah, Nimesh. In fact, uh, you know, uh, as, as everybody's been getting reports as well, massive selling by the FIS, couple of, uh, and there is a, there's been a lot of chatter about a couple of large hedge funds, uh, you know, liquidating a lot of India position. Uh, not only India position, but positions across Asia and emerging markets, so that's, that's led to a lot of pressure as well. We've tested the uh, the uh, crucial sub technical supports as well, so that got tested as well. But in general, I guess, uh, you know, the uh, the other way to read this is before the big event on June 4th, if the market's a little light, I think Absolutely. it's, it's, it's blessing, in a blessing in disguise, right? So it's a bit positive as well that we're not getting too excited and going into a ev big event with, with so much of long position. So in a way, it's, it's healthy that this correction has happened. Need to see how the how uh, you know the next few weeks pans out because of the I mean next week uh, Monday we have the fourth phase yes. uh, earnings are still on and we're seeing huge reactions to the earnings as well so it's going to be volatile but uh, till the time we, we we you know take supports at crucial levels and and we just consolidate these levels it should be good and fine before the fourth big event. Well, that's right. And, uh, you know, Prashant, I'll be waiting by to hear about the earnings picture, how no that one, is No one cares up. about earnings, so we're going to do that last. I think, so we'll uh, do that last. I think uh, <laughs> let, let's let's start off with uh, the market action first, Anuj. And the FI setup is quite interesting as well. So tell us how you're reading the data points. You know, uh, Nigel, first things first, uh, our dependence on FI flows has obviously reduced. Yes. You know, if we had this kind of numbers five years back, the market would have collapsed. Uh, so in that sense, it's good. Uh, the SIP number this time also was 21,000 crores thereabout. Uh, but I think what I'm doing is, while FIs have been selling on cash markets, uh, in the FNO market, there's been aggressive short positioning. Uh, I mean, there's a graph that I've made now. We need to make some adjustment in this because the contract sizes have changed on the Nifty. But even then, if you look at the percentage numbers, uh, we are now at, uh, you know, almost uh, a record high uh, short positioning. Uh, now, that is interesting because, uh, you know, we've had this three or four times in the past. And I'll go by the last two years data because uh, I think that's telling you a lot. Uh, we had the same situation in March 2023. And what happened in the market in that period? The Nifty fell from the top by about 10% or thereabout. Uh, I think uh, 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 some of the graphics will come up for you, yeah. And after that, in the next three months, you know what was the return for the Nifty? 18%. Then we had October 2023, when the market fell, Nifty fell 7%, when these short positions were taken by FIs, over the next three months, Nifty returned 15%. I'm talking about Nifty returns, and this has happened in the past, okay? This time, we've already fallen about 4% on the Nifty. Let's see what we do uh, three months from here on. Uh, I want to add another angle here, which is the India VIX, and, uh, you know, add the past indicator. The India VIX has risen from 10 to 19. Today, I think we closed at somewhere around 19. And last time when we had India VIX at 19 was in September, October 22. Actually, the markets normally have two tough months, uh, May and October, uh, right? And uh, last two years have been like that. In October 22 also, we, uh, you know, crossed 19 and uh, Nifty fell almost 6% from the peak. But after that, we again hit all-time high. And my sense is that sometimes and most of the times in markets, these things repeat. Uh, so if I were to stick my neck out, my sense is that you'll have a new high and a significantly higher high at some point this year itself. Okay, interesting. Uh, Rao, let's get you as well into the conversation. Uh, what are you, what, how are you reading this? You know, as Nimesh said earlier, if the markets are selling off a little bit ahead of the big event and the outcome should obviously be in favor of the markets, let's get continuity of the, uh, you know, of the current ruling government. It's, it could be a blessing in disguise. Your take on the Nifty first up. So, uh, thanks for having me on the show, Nigel. I think uh, without wanting to get into specifics on why the market has corrected, I think this is a welcome correction. I think uh, if we were to look at uh, the stocks that we were tracking under our coverage, and particularly the more expensive ones, 
and we were looking at five, ten year averages. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of these companies uh, were trading at between half to one and a half times standard deviation above mean. So valuations were not supportive to begin with going into the result season. Right. And the stocks were not only price of perfection, some of these were priced beyond perfection, right? And I think when you have those kind of valuations, the room for error is very little. And you know, you've seen that in the result season so far. I mean, there are not too many companies where you've got significant 10, 15% kind of earnings upgrades. In fact, in some you've got 10, 15% earnings downgrades. And I think when the you know dust settles and we take a look at upgrades to downgrades, I think my hunch is that eventually at the end of the result season, you'll probably have more downgrades and you'll have upgrades. My big worry, Nigel, is uh, though while consumer companies are talking about volume growth returning, I think margins have topped out across the board for corporate India. So it is going to be top line that is going to have to deliver. And if that doesn't happen, uh, you know, even if the market was to rally, say, post the event, I don't know how much of that would probably be sustainable because we've had a remarkable two-year base, such a depressed base of two years on which everything has grown. Uh, I don't know what kind of incremental levers we have from here. The only thing that can support the market is the fact that your flows, domestic flows keep coming in. Uh, but, you know, at that point, th there's a tipping off point for everything, so I, that's a, I think. That's a big call that you're making. Uh, you're saying that uh, from here on, uh, the EPS growth that we had because of the margin uptick, that would slow down. Absolutely, Anuj. I think okay. uh, you look at, uh, you know, let's take a look at the sector of, of the week, right? Consumer. Hmm. Lever, was, Lever was operating at 13, 14% margins a decade back. Today, that's 25 is 25 going to go to 30, 35? I don't think so. I think most consumer companies have topped out. Mm. Uh, IT companies' margins aren't going anywhere in a material fashion. NIMS and banks are contracting. So that's what, if you exclude Reliance, that's 60% of the market right there. So if 60% of the market isn't going to see mar margin expansion at an aggregate level, how are you going to see? I believe you track cement closely. I mean, yeah. just look at the misses on EBITDA per ton that is Big happening time. on cement, right? So where is that, at an aggregate level, where are you going to see margin expansion coming from? That's the question. If it's not going to be top line driven, mm. I think the market is going to have a challenge in terms of sustaining earnings. I think the biggest problem with the market, Nigel, is every year you can go back and you can speak to these gentlemen across uh, the, the dais here. For the last 15, 20 years, I've seen every year the market starts over the 15, 20% earnings growth and then comes down to mid to high single digits. And I think it's just such a... You know, I think somewhere the, the broking community takes, needs to take responsibility for, I, and I, I'd go a step further saying misguiding. You know, I, I think you need to be a little more realistic in the way you project things uh, so that people don't lose money on your recommendations. But oh. uh, even if, as Anuj was saying, you know, even if you get the short covering on the, uh, you know, on the future side or you do get some follow-on buying, I think it's going to be challenging to sustain those valuations in the near term. Oh, absolutely. I think all of us need to be a bit more responsible, uh, brokers, media, everyone. Uh, but staying with FIIs, uh, now there's a very interesting uh, question that we are asking today. Uh, and in fact, we are asking this question to Nimesh. Have the FIIs missed the Make in India buzz? Uh, and uh, Nimesh, of course, I was privy to the research that you had sent that you're yeah. going to present right now. It looked fascinating. Why don't you take us uh, through so, that? No, no, just, to, uh, just to say, uh, the, the sense that, uh, you know, Make in India was the biggest wealth mm. creator for the last couple of years across, across segments, right? Whether it's uh, uh, the defense theme or the railway theme, or for that matter, the CAPEX theme. But the key question is whether the investors and analysts at large miss the whole bus. Let me just go to the wall and explain why I'm saying this. So the big question is, uh, uh, is FIS and the investor community at large miss the uh, Make in India bus? Now, there's been a big, huge, huge wealth creator for, for a lot of investors in the last couple of years. So I just, I just came across some big, interesting reports from larger FI, FI brokerages in this last few days. Uh, you know, Namura put out a big report on defense this week. It's a 100-page report, and they say that they see a $140 billion opportunity in the defense sector in India over the next 10 years. So that's a big opportunity in the defense side. Uh, the next big report, which came from Bofa Securities, they actually upgraded a couple of uh, industrial names like Simmons and ABV, and they see a $450 billion of capex uh, that can come across to these, uh, to these companies over the next 8 to 10 years. So again, a big number as far as big capex opportunity for these companies in India. The third was on, uh, on the railways. Morgan Stanley put out a big note on the railway. They, they see a big revival in the railway capex, and, and they had actually initiated coverage on, on few companies as well. And similarly, there was a big report uh, uh, maybe, uh, maybe four weeks back from, Go, uh, from Goldman Sachs on the power sector. They see a big opportunity even in the transmission space uh, in, in, uh, in India. So uh, look at the stocks that I'm focusing on. Uh, Namura put out a note on the uh, on the defense sector, and they put out a initiating report on both HAL as well as on BEL uh, with the buy ratings. ABB and Simmons, Bofa actually upgraded the stocks to buy from neutral, 
and they have now given a multiple of close to 75 times on both these names. Similarly, Titagar Wagon, Morgan Stanley put out a note on the railways and this, they had initiated coverage on the stock with an overweight rating and a target price of another 25% upside from current levels. Similarly, Hitachi, Goldman Sachs had put out a note with the initiating report uh, just a four weeks back and they see a huge uh, potential upside for Hitachi as well, even from current levels. But the key is, uh, look at the kind of uh, performance these stocks have done, the wealth that these stocks have created in the last two and three years. Hindus, uh, Hindustan R&X Hal, it's up eight times in last two years and uh, it's up 15 times in the last three years. I'm talking about 15x returns in the last three years for Hal. Similarly for BEL, the stock is up already 12x in the last three years. ABB is up 9x, Siemens is up 6x in the last three years. Titagar Wagon, there is an initiating report from Morgan, but that stock is already up 33 times in the last three years. Similarly, Hitachi Energy, where the stock has gone up 12 times in the last three years. So this has been a huge rally we've seen in these names, and now we are seeing a big reports as well. Uh, having said that, while everybody agrees to the big uh, you know, opportunity which is there, a big total addressable market, but even in terms of valuations, we've seen a lot of catch-up in, in, in these stocks as well, as far as valuations are concerned. Hindustan Aeronautics is now trading at 40 times versus the 10 year, five year average of 20 times. Similarly, BEL now trading at 40 times versus 10 year average of close to 30 times. ABB is now trading at close to 90 times on FI25 earnings, whereas the five year average has been 87 times. Similarly, Simmons at 81 versus 10 year of, five year of 71. And power, uh, Titagar is trading at now 45 times on FI25 price to earnings. So the key is while uh, the addressable market could be quite large, but we've already seen a huge rally in all these uh, Make in India companies, whether it's defense, whether it's aerospace, all of stuff done really well. So the question is whether a lot of investors and analysts miss the bus in terms of the Make in India theme. Raul, you've been tracking uh, defense uh, and you've put out a note as well eh, at Nirmal Bank. What's your sense in like the likes of BEL and HAL? At 40 times, uh, uh, is it easy to convince the investors to buy the stories now? On a lighter note, our report was 155 pages. <laughs> but, no, that per, per, that, per page, sorry. per page productivity, per capita. <laughs> yeah, no, but I think the interesting part of that report, uh, I don't know if you guys had a chance to read it, it's actually co-authored by the ex-MD of BML. Yes. Uh, yeah. So actually, it's actually a very, it, there is no defense report in India. That is, uh, it's a very differentiated report from that angle. But that being said, I think your point is well taken. I think there are two or three points here, uh, Nimesh Bhai. I think, uh, what, what I would have liked to see in your link would have been sales growth also, yeah. right? You'll see that sales growth has not kept up with the stock price growth. So it is a lot of the future opportunity that you've captured without actual deliverables. The same thing happened in the chemical sector in India when the lockdown started. If you see these same names, right? Naveen, SRF, Galaxy, Rosari, Aarti, they had all gone up between 5 to 10x when it had started. This entire China plus one theme. There was no growth in sales, but you bought the hope. The question now is once this indigenization does happen, and you do become, as the Prime Minister says, Atmanirbhar. The point is, the who is the largest buyer of these products? It's the government of India. So if you can make the product and you can keep it in your warehouse, the problem is that your working capital and your balance sheet will fluctuate a lot because the final offtake has to be taken there. So cash flows could also vary. But the point is, over a period of time, if you do reach, say, 10% indigenization, 15 20%, the numbers will actually start to, you know, uh, show up. And then your valuations will look reasonable because it's a numerator-denominator game at the end of the day. And I'll take you back to a classical story of a stock that I've been very bullish on for a, for a very, very long time, which is Westlife. It was a loss-making company for the longest time. So it looked at very absurd multiples. But today, even though the multiples are still absurd today at 50 times, where it's looking far better than it was a few years back at 120, 130 times. So I think once the numbers start coming in, then this will look a lot more rational because I think the story of revenue growth is going to begin now. Yeah. That no, is where, I you know, so, so I, I think the so stocks have point, gone too far point, out. No, and so then addressable market is quite large. We all know that there could be a large opportunity in terms of revenue growth uh, for all these companies. But the fact is that already the stocks have rallied so much. I know HAL is up 15 times, BEL so, is up 12 uh, times. The way I look at it, Dimesh Bhai, is don't buy these stocks uh, for 10, 15, 20% now. Yeah. If you're buying it, Exactly. Try, try and have Absolutely. a horizon of about 5-10 years to be okay. holding this. Like hold it like you would have held a Bajaj Finance or an HDFC Bank or a Hindustan Lever. And then take a look at your returns. Because if you buy these right now, near-term disappointment chances are higher than actually near-term positive Absolutely. surprises. Alright, interesting. So big opportunity out there. The stocks have rallied, but over a longer span of time, maybe in fact, there could be some entry opportunities out there. Well, let's focus on earnings. Prashant, take it away. A lot of companies have already uh, reported. Hits, misses, how are the earnings stacking up? I mean, it's a little mixed, actually. I'm looking at the NSE 200 group of companies. So actually, let me just uh, go across and explain uh, what we're trying to do here. So we do this every quarter. Question we're trying to answer is, 
what are fourth quarter earnings doing to full year F525 earnings? And the reason that question is important is because markets trade on forward basis, right? I mean, based on what forward earnings estimates are. Uh, so, I mean, actually, some are looking at F526, but that's too far out. So what we're doing is we're looking at what are the changes in the last one month, basically one month because we are taking a point before the earnings season started till now. And over the last one month, as the earnings season has progressed, how have the top 200 companies, which, is the most, which are the most liquid companies, most traded well-owned companies, where are, what are earnings looking like for them? So this is actually the picture. Uh, 51 companies, actually 104 companies have reported, first of all, so uh, a little over 50% of the companies have reported. Out of these, 51 companies actually have seen earnings being downgraded. Consensus, and these are consensus Bloomberg estimates. And for 42 companies, uh, you know, EPS for F525 actually has been up. So more uh, down than up right now. Now, let me just start with the good news, which is, of course, you know, where uh, earnings estimates have been brought up. And I've, what I've tried to do is basically bunch companies together in a certain segment, uh, adjacent sectors, but broadly, you know, in the same category, except, of course, P&B, because that is so sort of, you know, uh, it's, it's a big, big one, right? 70% upgrade to F525 estimates uh, in the last one month is what P&B has seen. Uh, Vedanta and some of these sort of comp other companies, like in the material space, uh, Vedanta has seen a 26% up upgrade to full year estimates. Coal India, 8%. Tata Power has seen a 5.4% uh, upgrade. The other companies are trend. This is largely in the sort of consumer space, consumption space. Trend has seen an 11% up upgrade. Loda, Macrotech has seen a 7%, and Bajaj Auto has seen a nearly 6% upgrade. Oracle Financial Services, 9% upgrade. And you've got Indus Tower, of course, telecom as a sector has come back, Vodafone, et cetera. Now, uh, hopefully, viable 8% upgrade there for Indus Tower's full year estimates. Now, financials to end this list with. Uh, you know, HDFC Bank, 7%, Indian Bank, 6 6.5%, uh, and you have HDFC Mutual Fund, AMC, which has seen a 6% upside as well. You know, I'm stopping and cutting off at that 6 5% kind of a mark and not going beyond, but there are 41 companies which have actually seen uh, upgrades, but these are the meaningful ones. Now to the downgrades here, and Pyramal tops the list. N numbers actually came out earlier this week. 21% downgrade to full year estimates. ICSA Pro has seen a 14% downgrade uh, to estimates. Uh, there is MRF, Dalmia Bharat, Tata Chemicals, all over 10% downgrade uh, to estimates. There is the IT pack, right? I mean, IT has had it bad, even though estimates were lower, but, I mean, there, there have been misses even on that. And Tech Mahindra, CoForge, L&T Technologies, anybody with, between 6 and 8% downside is what we've seen there. Uh, to wrap it up, Godrej Properties, 6% downside. And it's interesting, right? Loda was in the upgrade list with a decent ups upgrade, but properties, Godrej Properties is seeing a 6% downgrade to full-year estimates. And Loris Laboratories, here, of course, there have been misses for a couple of years now, and another 5% downgrade is what we have seen. So, as I said, more than 50% earnings reported out of the NSA 200 basket, and so far it's a mixed bag with more companies seeing downgrades than upgrades. So, you know, Rahul, uh, just to uh, just to take your uh, take this forward on on the earnings uh, within the coverage that you all you all have, anything that stood out for you on 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 a big beat, or maybe something which is like a very much a big disaster as well on either side. So, I think in terms of uh, I wouldn't say disaster. I think the biggest letdown has been IT. Uh, I think because uh, Girish was anywhere the lowest on the street, and yeah. uh, when the lowest person on the street has to revise his numbers lower, it's a bit of it's a bit disconcerting. So, I think that was probably the most. Uh, disappointing. Uh, I think uh, just the commentary coming in from consumer has been all right. Hmm. Uh, I don't know how much of that is fructified. Double-digit volume growth is a very, very tough ask. Hmm. Double-digit revenue growth itself is a very tough ask, but double-digit uh, volume growth. But the commentary has been good. And I think in pockets, if you look at the mid-cap space, I think uh, the uh, AC players haven't been too bad. Hmm. I think if you strip out uh, the loss that Voltas had to take in its non-AC uh, business, it was all right. Blue Star had a phenomenal set of uh, results. Uh, I haven't gone through Polycap's numbers today, but I remember over the last few quarters, it's been one of the stocks uh, that has seen one of the largest uh, upgrades, uh, so to speak. But otherwise, like I was saying, I think broadly it's been a bit on the lower side. I think in terms of banks, Indicind, I can remember, has seen. But again, it's not been like a consensus, you know, everything has sort of been upgraded. But I think the biggest uh, positive surprise would be consumer, biggest neg negative surprise would be <laughs> IT. And on the mid-cap side, I think the biggest positive would be, say, something in the room AC space, names like Voltas, Blue Star, and, and the likes. All right, noted at that point, Raul. For the time being, though, we'll slip into a short break. Coming up next, we continue to decode the market gone by. And we'll put the spotlight on the FMCG stocks. Stay tuned. Thank you.